stir fries with, and actually, good question, it's not. And um, this stuff is much better for things like quiches, all kind of puddings, you know, like for what I'm making now. I've even made tiramisu with it, and raspberry mousse and things like that, or raspberry syllabub. So you just use it in, as a replacement for things like eggs and cream. It works pretty well. And you can buy fresh, I think. I think Typhon do it in the health food shop. But this is long life, so it's really handy. It stays in the cupboard for absolutely ages, like years. Yeah, it's got a massive long, long date on it. So it's a good standby. All I've done is, the secret with any tofu, if you're going to whiz it up, is to get rid of the grainy quality. So you just want to really belt it with the, um, the food processor or hand blender for as long as you can. So you get rid of that slightly grainy look and it goes really creamy. And then all you do is, I'll tell you it's going to be dead quick, I'm just waiting for the I just had some more chocolate, so I'm waiting for it to melt a bit. But I'm going to sweeten it. You can do sugar, you don't have to be totally pure, but I'm going to put some um, agave syrup in here, for those of you who haven't seen it before. And this is like the kind of vegan equivalent of honey. It looks like agave, but it's, I think they pronounce it agave. It's Mexican or something. And I'm going to put a fair bit of that in. Or you could use maple syrup, or date syrup, whatever, sugar. And a little bit of um, vanilla essence as well. About, I'm just going to measure this in the cap. About a teaspoon will do. I've actually given the recipe to Caroline and it's going to go on the Bart website at some point. So if you can't remember what I've done, then just look there. So, and just there. So that's it really. It's about three or four ingredients. Cheap, you know, easy, easy. And um, it's a dark chocolate boost, so it's, don't be expecting like a Cadbury's job, you know, it's kind of going to be kind of darker and more sort of like punchy really if you like. You know what dark chocolate's like? It's like eating a different food really, isn't it, in milk chocolate? Quite different. So this is just going to sort of wait for the bigger lumps here to melt. And all I've done in here, I've put a couple of inches of hot water in a saucepan and put a bowl over the top. It's called a double boiler in poshies. And it's just <laughs> it's something that like, everyone's got. As long as you, it fits over your own. It shouldn't really touch the bottom because it might break. As long as it's about that much at the bottom from where the bowl hits the, the pan. So it doesn't hit the pan completely. And then just have the hot water just act as a kind of a little cooker. And then that's all you do, you just melt it. You can microwave it, but I've burned chocolate in the microwave so many times, so I wouldn't advise it. This is actually easier. <coughs> you can control it a lot better that way. So that's about it, really. Any, any questions while I'm sort of stirring my chocolate? Does it um, set like a mousse? Yeah, it does. Because, it, I mean, I'd, this would be, still be quite runny when I give it to you to try, but you would just stick it in the fridge normally. It's really nice if you've got a lot of little tiny pots or little tiny coffee cups or something, it looks really pretty in that. And you can do other things, you could serve it with like ice cream or you could, instead of having ordinary chocolate, you could add maybe like crystallized ginger to it, make ginger and chocolate or maybe a bit of orange juice and orange zest, make you know, like an orange you want, like a sort of giant chocolate orange or something. Um, what else would I do with it? Oh, it's nice with things like berries, like blueberries or raspberries. What's the ratio? The ratio. Well, I've used one tub of um, silken tofu, which is about three <coughs> grams, I think. Uh, that anyway. And I've used about, you get anything between 200 and 300 grams of chocolate. So mm. it's very, very rich, and a little goes a long way. You can't eat masses of this. So you can actually half this, you know, quite easily. You still serve at least four people, because you don't need a lot of it. Unless you're complete chocoholics, which I think you guys are looking at all this. <laughs> I take it all back. You're putting a portion in here. Okay, that's the chocolate melt anyway. Just gonna get my little like, tea towel here. I'm gonna lift out the bowl, but kill myself. <laughs> If it's too rich, just reduce it from the recipe. Just, right. you know, cut it, it down. Wouldn't, it wouldn't affect the consistency. I don't think so. No, I just think it was. I mean, th this was invented by someone who just really liked chocolate a lot. I think so. It's yeah. kind of like not for the faint-hearted. But um, okay, let's try something else. Let's squeeze it. Like I said, the secret is if you whiz up the tofu first, so that way you get rid of any graininess, hopefully. Get Scrape the rest up. And do, if you've got one of these little rubbery spatula things, they are brilliant because you get like loads more out, which is always good. Just 
<laughs> obviously this is going to still be a bit hot, but normally it'd be cold because we have it in the fridge. So that's it. I'm just going to put this back on here a minute. Give it another whiz. I'll come to this. Because you want to make sure you haven't got any white bulbs in it because it's not a good look at it. Really. And what I'm going to do is just, I'll stop it every now and again. And what you do is just kind of start feeding it back in, off the, scrape it off the sides and feed it back in. That helps it to mix up better as well. I'm also going to do a sneaky taste to make sure it's sweet enough as well. And again, you know, do it by taste. You know, I was saying cooking is better. You can follow a recipe, it's a good guideline, but you kind of know what you like yourself best, don't you really? Some people like a much bit of mousse than others, so. What was that stuff you put in instead of honey? Um, agave syrup. Agave. Agave, yeah, it's A E A V E. It comes from a cactus, believe it or not, it's amazing. So that's just about it. Last little white bits going in there, whizzy, whizzy, whizzy. It's the sort of thing, you know, you can sort of do the night before. If you kind of like, we're kind of wanting to have a posh pudding or something, do it the night before, stick it in this little cup, so then you just take it out of the fridge when you need to use it the next day. So it'd be kind of an easy one to do. <laughs> you could put all sorts of things, like I say, blueberries or raspberries are good, because you've got that slight tartness of berries, then you've got the kind of rich chocolate thing. You've eaten so much chocolate, I doubt you're going to really get the benefit of this really. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say you put it in the fridge? <laughs> yeah, you put it, in the fridge, put it in the fridge to chill it. Okay, so that's it. Okay, now you can see the consistency of this. It's quite runny at the moment, but that will set because all the fat and everything in the chocolate will just kind of go. So I'm just going to put a little oh, tiny blob in there and then just hold yourself back now. <laughs> I'm just going to come and taste it in a minute. I'm mobbed, I can see it. Chocolate crepes, <laughs> you see the headlines now, can't you? <laughs> what do you think of cooks? Can you use that in like cakes? Well, that was actually cooking chocolate. I've not used cooking chocolate. I've always used to kind of, because we tend to get dinner and stuff for our events at Viva. We've always had really hardcore, you know, like 80% or 75% chocolate. I've not used the cooking, but the cooking is 50%, so it's still good. Oh, the tofu, sorry, what do you mean? Can you put it in cakes? Um, yeah, some things. I mean, it would depend on the kind of cake. If you want, yeah, you could, I have put it in cakes before. You know, I tend to use um, all sorts of things in cakes to make them rise to the eggs, but yeah, two for candy is one thing you can use. I mean, you can use <laughs> the tofu works really well in brownies. Does it? Ah, okay, we've got an expert here. Well done. Okay. It's funny, I've not done tofu in my brownies, but that's one thing I might have a go at. Tofu is if you want something squidgy and not crispy. If you wanted crispy like a biscuit, you wouldn't use tofu. You'd use something else like maybe bacon powder and a bit of soy flour. But if you wanted something squidgy, I think, yeah, tofu is, that's when tofu comes into it. So. <laughs> a lot of you in this room, you might have to sort of share this a bit. Okay, so if you 